Hey everybody, it's the Board Game Mechanics. I am Joel, and with me as always is... Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jason. And it's, I guess, like technically mid to late August when you're hearing this, which is crazy. Yep. We're going we're gonna to talk about, uh, you know, this year so far, and it's, you know what, two-thirds over? Over half over now, so... Yep, the only big con left is Essen, so, I mean, and, well, and PAX Unplugged, I guess, so... Yeah, and... I mean, Pax Unplugged is an awesome con, but I don't know. Does a ton of stuff release there, even? No, it's mostly just stuff that's already out. It's mostly, it brings games over for like a first look that came out at Essen. So it's America's first look at Essen games, I guess. Yeah. P- Penny Arcade. You, the other thing, too, is uh, this is a fun time of year because uh, all us teacher folk, if there's any teacher folk listening, they get this. We're uh, We're working like stupid hours to try and get caught up with beginning of the year stuff. Which means I'm drinking tons of caffeine. So, <laughs> yeah, he's <zany>. any. <laughs> so I think I probably literally drank like 125 <laughs> ounces of caffeine today. Um, so Jason, a quick question for you. Uh, you're a Mountain Dew boy. We've talked about that in the show before. Yep. Yep. Do you, okay, which one's your preference? Cans, bottles, or fountain? Um, I normally drink bottles, but I like fountain if I can get it from Speedway only. Yeah. Yeah. I, I uh, I love Speedway too. They're 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 freezy pop. It's no, it's <laughs> yeah. good. I mean, it is like yeah, uh, it is. yeah. I, I'm down with that. But it's a slightly longer drive for me to get. I'm a fountain guy too, man. Fountain's the best, and it's like such a good value. Um, the place that I go has a 44 ouncer in a in a foam cup because I hate the environment for a <laughs> dollar. <laughs> yeah, and it's so good because it has that. You know how when you get a fountain drink, sometimes it has that real good like fried bologna taste to it. <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I know what you're talking about, but <laughs> Oh man, it's just so good. You get a it used to be you could get a good fountain drink and you like were like, man, oh, this is Joe Camel country. I can taste that smoke. It's so good. <laughs> so I'm actually drinking a fountain Mountain Dew right now. Some of the some of the ordinances that have come around, I don't think we quite get as much Joe Camel in there, but <laughs> The, the place yeah. I get it at like serves deep fried <laughs> Indian food too, so I don't know. It's just nice. it's got a yeah. real good fried bologna taste to it too. So <laughs> it's the best part of waking up is is some fried bologna and Diet Mountain Dew in your mouth. So oh yeah, anyway, well, except the diet part, but yeah, <laughs> I uh, I'd rather put chemicals in my body than calories. I guess I don't know. So <laughs> six and one half a dozen of the other, I guess. Yeah. Well, anyway, this is uh this is your board game mechanics episode for late <laughs> August, fueled by my by Mountain Dew and Bologna. Ugh. All right, so now we're heading over to some news. And the first one that I wanted to talk about is from our boy Stefan Feld, who just lifted his restraining order, I'm pretty sure, as of yesterday. We got to so, see if we can get that back in effect here. <laughs> yeah, we'll Jason, try. get started. <laughs> All right. So, according to Huck, I, don't, I think that's how you pronounce the game company. They have a new game from him called Forum Trajanum, and it's being released in America by Stronghold Games at Essen. Huh. That's all I know. He already has a game named Trajan, so why not make another one called Forum Trajanum? Everybody loves Trajan. Maybe everybody will love this one. Everybody but Jason loves Trajan. <laughs> I'll play it. I like it. It's just not my favorite. The way how I've heard that game described most effectively is Stefan Fell was on a real tear. He was on a bender putting out new, like uh, Year of the Dragon, Notre Dame, uh, all these really great games. And then he was like, I've got like seven leftover mechanics. What can I do with them? <laughs> and yeah. he made Trajan. <laughs> it's a good game. But yeah, Forum Trajanum seems cool from the pictures. I mean, it doesn't tell you what the mechanics are, but I'm sure it's Lots of points, lots of uh, dry mechanisms that piece themselves together in a nice little package. And I'm looking forward to it. And, by, and being released by Indie Strongholds and Boards? Yeah. <laughs> yep. The, the new conglomerate. Asthma Day, watch out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll be we'll be playing the coup on Mars here before we know it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. What, so, do they have a name? I mean, what is that? Do, what are they going by? Do you know? I think it was Indie... Uh, board game alliance or something like that. I don't know. Ooh, no stronghold in there. That's crazy. Nope. That's true. Well, 
there's that's the conglomerate. Then there's Stronghold Games, and then there's Indie Boards yeah, and gotcha. Cards gotcha. and Action Phase. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Action Phase, the only game I know they've ever made is, is uh, well, I know they made Aeon's End, but then I know they were also... Um, Heroes oh, Wanted. Yeah, which is terrible. Anyway, um, yeah, I I didn't say that because they're <laughs> they're good Indiana boys that made that game. So <laughs> just because they're you, you can be loyal and still be honest, it's all right. It's a it's a bad game. I had it <laughs> like I went to I went to the Games Preserve, which is where the designer worked at, and I was like, "What do you guys sell a lot of down here? Like, what do you guys you know what do you guys suggest? I'm I'm never going to be in your shop again. What kind of thing that you have here that I might not find back at home? Like, do you have for me?" And, the guy's like, well, this is my game I designed. And like, I immediately was like, oh, cool. I'm meeting a designer. And this was, you know, a few years back when that was like a big deal. Right, and, yeah. and he's like, I can sell you everything that was on the Kickstarter. And it was $125 on the Kickstarter for the low, low price of $122. And I'll sign your <laughs> box. So that was one of the worst buys I ever think I ever made. But <laughs> it's just, it's just pure Ameritrash, like pretty much silliness. And, Right. I yeah. don't know. I think I sold my copy for like, I don't know, 14 bucks or something then. <laughs> the low, low price of $121. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the next pieces of news I have are all Kickstarters, I think. Yep. All right. So the first one I want to talk about is a game called WrestleNomicon from Fire Opal Games. It was supposed to hit Kickstarter as of 814, but they kind of delayed it a little bit. And I have a video up on YouTube. If you're interested in a Cthulhu wrestling game, you can go check that out. If I'm not, can I still watch it? Uh, Sure. Yeah. I would prefer that. Yeah. Okay. Maybe so you- here's the question I have. It looks like there's like, are there different factions in different boxes on this game? Or like, what's up? Or was it a front and back box art? Because on your promo picture, there was a couple boxes. I didn't know yeah. what's up with that. It's two boxes. It's a two-player game. One player is playing as Cthulhu. One player is playing as Hester or Haster, whatever the other Elder God's name is. Okay. So they're completely different decks that you're playing against each other. Gotcha. With. So okay. So basically, so basically, Keyforge is a complete ripoff of this game. Okay, well, you heard it here first. <laughs> Actually, like surprisingly, this game is really fun. Yeah. Like it's super fun. Yeah, for a Cthulhu game because it's just a card game, but you're trying to manipulate where your cards are in a line. So you can get to ground zero and then battle everybody else and you're trying to knock somebody out of the game. You have 25 health and you're trying to make somebody get down to zero. Oh, Uh, Jason, here's the Mountain Dew kicking in, man. I'm sorry. I was at the board gaming shop on Friday (laughs) and and there were some good boys that came in for their Friday Night Magic and they were looking at board games. And I'm trying to be a good board game evangelical and tell them <laughs> right. about the goodness of board games. So I'm like, hey, you guys should check out Ashes, Ashes Rise of the Phoenix Born or um, check out this game over here. It's kind of a cool thing that like, if you don't want to spend all your money on Magic cards, you could play this too. And then the one guy comes over and he goes, I've been kind of like thinking about board games and trying to get into them, but I'm really into HP Lovecraft and I wish there was an HP Lovecraft board game. And I was like, is this guy, <laughs> is this guy trolling me or is he for real? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... And he was like honest to get us earnestly like trying to find an HP Lovecraft <laughs> board game. I was like, well, there's um okay, well if I if I take my shoe off and throw it at this rack, I'll hit six of them. But yeah. I mean <laughs> Yeah, it's true. <laughs> anyway, you I cut you off. What were you saying? Do you remember? No, I was just saying it was a good game where you're battling each other down to zero. It's like it's like a magic style game. So if only they had this game, you could have told this guy this game. Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. And it's a, it's a, not even a CCG, it doesn't seem. Nope. You buy the box and you have everything you need to play. Sweet. Um, the next game I found on Kickstarter is called Whiskey Business. It's by Lars Thorne. And this is a pressure luck dice game where you're rolling dice to try to collect faces to make certain countries whiskey. So like in America, you're trying to make Jack Daniels or whatever, but you're basically just trying to collect sets and do it quicker than everybody else. And you're also trying to not get three sheets to the wind. Because if you fail so many times, you take a sheets to the wind token. And if you get three, then your turn is over. So it's kind of an interesting where you're getting drunk while playing this game, which is kind of funny. But I'm guessing since it's on Kickstarter, it's not actually Jack Daniels. It's like Jerk Daniels or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't even think they have names. It just said America <laughs> and then like corn. Yeah. 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 Um, the next game I saw was from Catalyst Games, which they're actually like legit, but for some oh, reason yeah. they're, do- they're doing a Kickstarter. And the game is Super Camelot, which looks like 
The Legend of Zelda, but in board game form. Huh. That's pretty cool. Tiny Epic Quest, I think, kind of has the same feel, too. So I'm I'm curious to see what they did with this one. That's really cool. Yeah, you're like, uh, from what I can tell, you're going around flipping over tiles, like exploring tiles, and you're trying to fight baddies to be the first person to find the Holy Grail or become the richest. So just kind of a merit trashy, I think, sort of like a dungeon crawl, maybe. What was the big hit game Catalyst put out a couple years ago? I know I own one of theirs, but I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. I have no idea. I couldn't tell you at all. They're they're a legit company though. I mean, like I can see their logo in my head right now. Yeah, it's like just, yellow. Yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, they're a big biggish company. I'm sure the production value on this is really good. Battletech is is Catalyst Games, which I love Battletech. And mm-hmm. that brings us up to the next thing, which is Tiny Epic Mechs, which comes to Kickstarter soon. I'll make sure that we get a nice update on this every week until it's on Kickstarter. So <laughs> this will be your home for tiny epic mechs information. <laughs> I, I love Battletech. Like, I absolutely love that system. I play, like, the video games like crazy. I play MechWarrior Online. Like, I absolutely just am a fanboy of that. But, like, playing Battletech and actually getting a miniatures army and stuff is pretty pricey. So, um, I, yeah, unless you buy it on eBay used, which is, like, every other board game thing. So, <laughs> like, right, honest, yeah. honestly, if you've ever looked at Warhammer armies on ebay it's insane like people buy like a thousand dollars worth of minis to make an army and then they sell for like 17 dollars plus 11 dollars shipping on there so anyway but uh catalyst did definitely make um battletech and then um they definitely have uh dragon fires as well oh uh, yeah dragon fire that means they have shadow run too yeah shadow run and then vikings so they gotcha. have some pretty All amazing right. games actually so um and then Yarrow actually was theirs as well, but that one kind of fell off the face of the earth like real quick. But at any rate, they're a legit company uh, for sure. So that's one to keep your eyes on. And I wasn't kidding about the tiny Epic Max. Like, I am so hyped for that game um, because I like I love that it's going to be tiny, so you don't have to have a like room in your house dedicated to miniatures. And I love that it's going to be quick. So um, I'm definitely looking for that on, on table on, uh, on Kickstarter. And that might redeem this year yet. This 2018 <laughs> might actually be a legitimate year now. <laughs> Doubtful, but I mean, we'll see. Yeah. I, if, if you get this one, I want to try it because I'm interested in how they're going to make those mechs so little. Yeah. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> yeah. I just imagine, I'm just imagining a little meeple guy wearing a mech suit and that's crazy. <laughs> Well, and then the crazy part too is um, all the mechs they have in the first like pre-production shots. I'm like, oh, I know what that is. That's a uh, you know, that's a, a thunderbolt, and that's like a stalker, and that's you know, I mean, like, so like they definitely ripped off BattleTech big time, right? But, yeah. But I mean, like, I think it's like kind of a nod to BattleTech, not a we're trying to make money where you know, like, you can't because I mean, like, I don't know. I don't think the Venn diagram overlaps really at all. Like, there's people who are hardcore BattleTech people, and they have more money than me and they buy battle tech and there's people like me who have less money than the battle tech people and they buy this game instead. So, um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's one I'm looking forward to for sure. All right. So I am going to talk about a first game that I played and it is an old one, like 1998. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I've definitely played this one and I, I like to hear what you think about it. Yeah, so I played the new one, the one that Z-Man just put out a couple years ago or last year or something, and it's through the desert. <laughs> Probably say that so everybody knows what I'm talking about. Um, essentially, what you're doing here is you're placing these little five camel caravan leaders on the board somewhere, and you're trying to connect certain color camels to the camels, the camel leader to score points to go over these point tiles or encircle some tiles and score a bunch of tiles at one time, and you're going to place two two different or two camels every turn and they don't have to be the same color. They can be the same color and you can't intersect with another caravan. Um, and that's the game. It was okay. I'm glad I played it, but again, it's like, it's like ticket to ride, but without the cards, like if you're just taking trains and then throwing them on routes, that's what it felt like to me. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, like that definitely is what I get a vibe from this game too. Like Alan Mood played this, and he was like, "Oh, this could be something a little more," and then made Ticket to Ride. Yeah. I I think, um, but I played this game like I don't know six seven years ago probably, and when I played it, like it was at a board game night where someone was hyping it up like crazy, like, "Oh, this game's a classic. We got to play it." 
And so anytime anybody is that, you're going to go in with like these sort of <laughs> high expectations. Yeah, and then when you yeah. play it, you're like, um, cool. I'm glad you shared that with me. I'm going to be polite. I, I don't know. It just, <laughs> It feels like uh, it feels like when <laughs> when you have like a weird uncle who's like, man, I'm gonna play some really great music from my childhood, and then he plays you, you know, like I don't know, he plays you some like Sugar Hill Gang rap or something. I don't know, like <laughs> yeah, Frank Zappa. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's like okay, cool, I respect it, but I've seen where this has gone in the meantime, and I like it better. So I don't know. This is one that's kind of that. The other thing too is I feel like the desert and camel thing is super abstract. So when they re-released this, I kind of was thinking about themes on this that might work differently or better and give it like a new fresher life. And I couldn't think of a better one than Camels in the Desert, but I don't know. You could have made this game anything, you know? It could have been like zits on a teenager's face or whatever. But I mean <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I kind of went into it with reservations anyway because it's Renner Knizia. Yeah. And I've played like one other game of his that I like, and that's Hollywood Blockbuster. And even yeah. then, I mean, you know, that's just an auction game. So I was like, what is this? And then I played this weird on guard game one time, which was not good. So th- that already had two strikes against it. But it's it's an okay game, and I would play it again if somebody wanted to play it. Yeah, I'm trying to think what my favorite Kinesia game is. I'm going to say Shot and Totten. Is that his? Yeah, Battle Line. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a decent game. Um, Actually, Hollywood Blockbuster, the only way I can really understand that game is a Kinesia game. It's like, I'm thinking he must have like gone on like a like drinking bender and then like totally made a game while he was drunk. And and then he yeah. sobered up and he was like, what have I done? <laughs> I could see that. Yeah, it doesn't really feel like him at all, which is no. kind of weird. Yeah. It doesn't have math in it. I mean, it's weird. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> all right. Well, I played a game that I would give... Um, Maybe slightly higher marks than Through the Desert uh, this week. And it's something that's a little newer, but it's it's one that a lot of people really do like. Uh, King's Forge. It's it's kind of a neat little game. Um, the, good's a, the good of it is it's a dice manipulation game, a uh, dice rolling game that's a lot of fun. You're using these sets of die to craft different goods for the king so that way you can become a more noble weapon maker or blacksmith for the king and and build your reputation up um it plays real quick it does not stay its welcome you just play maybe four or five rounds of this game um of these dice rolls and and basically the whole time you're drafting cards and paying for cards with your dice pool in order to get new dice so you kind of have to balance am i going to pay for these cards with my dice that i could roll this time but then get dice for the future, more dice for the future, or am I going to roll these dice now and try and build this equipment right now? And uh, it's got some just neat things about it for sure. The things that I don't like about it are this game's like 50 bucks MSRP, and I feel like it could have been... It could have been a $29 game and not had a board in it and just been a little more basic. And I think the first edition actually was that way. It didn't have a board in it. It was just cards and dice. So... I don't know. You know that uh, I'm kind of a little more of a minimalist. I would rather get more games that don't have stupid components in them. Ah, that's a lie. That's not true at all. It's a perfect game. <laughs> I love how it has extra superfluous components in it, like a huge anvil that's like the most absurd first player marker I've ever seen, except for Evolution. <laughs> it's got a slightly beat. but Right, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um but it's, I don't know, it's just got a lot of extra junk in it, and it could, it doesn't have to be there, but I think they're trying to make it feel like you get your full values worth. And I guess I'm thinking of like Dinosaur Island and some games like that where they kind of go all out and you pay a little more for it. It does kind of feel good to pay, play that way sometimes, but I don't know. King's Forge is a pretty cool game though. Dice manipulation, set collection, and kind of like getting, it's a race kind of almost too. Um, I wish I had a little more depth to it, and I know there are some expansions to it that have come out in recent times um, that might add that to it, but it's something that I'm going to hang on to and keep in my collection. Yeah, once you posted the pictures and I saw all those piles of dice I was in, yeah, that looks yeah. like my kind of game for sure. Yeah, it's it's pretty fun. All right, so another game I played is a recently delivered Kickstarter, I'm pretty sure. At least that's how my buddy got it, um, and it is called Gearworks. Um, essentially what this game is, is you're building a grid, a five by four grid with gears, different color gears and different numbers. And you either have the numbers, either have to go in ascending or descending order based on 
the first player to play after the first card that's laid down. And each column can only have one gear of each color. And you're trying to be the last person to play in each column in each row to get this part that is associated with that that row. Because you have a contraption card that needs a letter part and a number part. And you want to try to make sure you can get that letter and that number part by the end of the round. Or you won't get any points for that contraption. Or if you build half of it, you get half the points. So you're trying to outthink other people and not show your hand too early as what you're trying to collect and... It's a fun game. It was. It plays only over three rounds, probably about 45 minutes or so. And if you like building grids and collecting parts to build contraptions, this would definitely be a game that you'd be interested in, I think. Based on the two games that you described tonight, if you told me one of those was a Kinesia game, I would have guessed the one with all the numbers on the cards in a grid pattern. But Oh, yeah. It felt like a Kinesia game for sure. <laughs> Yeah, actually, this one's gotten some really rave reviews, man. People really are loving this game. It's good. Like I would after we played, I was like, man, I want to play that again because I never completed any of my contraptions and I still only lost by one point. So there's a couple different couple different routes you can take to just get get piles of points. And yeah, I really liked it. It was fun. Huh. Um, The guy who designed this was on one of the Facebook groups and um, it was a little bit self promoting because he was like. He was like, uh, family staycation. What should I play first? And put his own game in there. <laughs> yeah. And people were like, Gearworks. He's like, why, thank you. It's my game. Like, it wasn't That's quite funny. like that, but I was like, I was like, screw that. Play Biblios. So- <laughs> oh, yeah. I saw that. <laughs> that was funny. I didn't realize that was that guy. <laughs> so, uh. I mean, like, a lot of people love this game, though, and it probably will make some people's top tens of this year list, if I had to guess. Um, it's, it's one it's that I, good. I want to play yeah. it. How long does it take to play? Uh, it took us a little while just because we were thinking and kind of chatting, but it should only take probably about an hour, no less or and, no more. I and, mean. and it's a little bit on the cheaper side too, because it's basically a card game, right? <laughs> yeah. It's just cards and there's like some little lightning bolt, like wooden bits. And I think my buddy said on Kickstarter, it was like 22 bucks and that was with delivery and everything. So, wow. yeah, it's a, it's a, for $22, this is an amazing game. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it. That's pretty cool. I'm always looking for like uh, cool games like this that are in that cheaper value kind of thing. Um, that if I see them on sale on Amazon or Cool Stuff or something for you know under twenty bucks, like I'll buy little games like this for like coworkers and stuff sometimes because I want people to play games. And so the more you're exposed to cool games, the more you want to play them. So I'm always I'm always interested in stuff like this. Yeah, you could fit this whole game in one of those little um, plastic things that you store your little card games in. Yeah. That's, yeah, it would all fit. That, it would all fit in there. That's awesome. I yeah, I'm about ready to start a third one of those. Which I just kidding, Kristen. If you by some chance listen to this episode, <laughs> if she gets the thirty minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, no, I I those <laughs> those photo bins. I don't even know what the brand is. Like, but you're getting like every fabric store. Like they're perfect for this kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, Jason, the last game I'm going to talk about is this is a great great game yes it's a really good game well this is an interesting one i i play this one with my social studies class sometimes um because it does teach about the world's fair yeah it does um but this is world's fair 1893 and you don't see this one being talked about hardly at all and i kind of feel like this game kind of like gave renegade games a big boost you know oh yeah i agree yeah because it was pretty hot when it came out it has really cool art in it it's just a real simple game though it's just uh basically uh pick which pile of cards you want kind of game almost so um pretty easy mechanically like you can teach it to anybody um but it's got a lot of depth to it at the same time that you're doing Mm -hmm. this you know kind of trying to collect the right guys or combinations of stuff to have majorities and um Pretty pretty neat game though overall, um, and it's another one of those games too that I put in the same category as like your Gearworks. That it's a fair amount of game there, and it's fairly cheap. I mean, I'm guessing this one's I think forty bucks, maybe MSRP. Well, yeah, so, that sounds right. But a cool game, I definitely like it. Um, one that just doesn't see a lot of love, and I mean, like I guess a two minute mechanics on it is there's like a array of cards around a Ferris wheel, and you're picking which different like uh, kind of part of the part of the world's fair you're you're visiting i guess to kind of try and uh get like a benefit from 
And so when you're doing that, you're putting down little like cubes to try and like get a majority in it. So it's got like an area control thing in it. But then it's also got kind of like a almost drafting because you're taking the different kind of cards from the different areas you visit in. So it's it's balancing those two mechanics back and forth, kind of a little tug of war of of like which is more important, getting these cards or having you know an, a control of an area. Um, so just kind of a neat little game, um, pretty fun, pretty fast to set up, and it's it's got really cool like little facts about the World's Fair and all the cards. So that's kind of cool too. Yeah, that designer, J. Alex Kevern, is like, he's been making a ton of games for Renegade. Like, he's doing the new passing through Petra and all that stuff. So, yeah, he he's owes a lot of his stuff to Renegade as well. Jason, I'm going to say that this year so far, to me, well, I guess we're just going to take a look at the health of this current year. And the way how we're going to do that is we're going to look at our top three games through half the year. And then maybe we'll have a little discussion about how does that stack up against, you know, maybe some other years we've looked at. So, Jason, I don't know. I guess you get a, you get us fired off here, man. All right. So I'm going to get us started with my number three. So the lowest one. My best one will be the last one I talk about. And I played a full game of this at Origins, and that's how good it is. It was just not even finished art, finished production, and that is Museum. This game is incredible. I mean, it's just essentially set collection. But the way that it does it is really smooth and elegant. And being able to arrange your museum however you want to score a pile of points at the ending is really fulfilling. And I can't wait to get an actual copy of this and play it a lot more. It looks it's really so good. Amazing production value, it looks like. It looks stupid good. Yeah, every, every card of which there are like 150 has different art, all by Vincent Dutre. And man, it it's it's amazing. And they all have different sorts of like blonde haired Dutch boy steelworkers on them. So, <laughs> yeah, actually, <laughs> I don't even know if there are any people, actually. That's probably why the art holds up. <laughs> That's just a little jab at his New York 1901. But, uh, that, I mean, like, I know the guy's a great artist, but every time I look at that New York 1901 box, I go, really? <laughs> are we good yeah. here? <laughs> yeah. And I know people love that game too. They think it's beautiful. Like the actual board itself is really beautiful, but the box is rough, man. To me, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I I get it. I, yeah, I, I'm with you. Yes, you're with me. Not just you get it. I'll take it. Um, so this game is definitely one that I would, if I had played it, I would see it for sure making my top five, um, probably three. Uh, do you know by any chance when this one's? Is this an Essen release? Like, is there any shot we get this in the states this year? I thought when we played it at Origins, the guy that was demoing it said it was supposed to come out around Gen Con time. So I'm not sure if it actually released at Gen Con or not. I don't know. Wow. This is one of those games that, like, it just feels like, um, you know, my sweet, sweet mom. She wants to buy me a couple of board <laughs> games at Christmas time, and this one feels like it'll land on the Christmas list. So, <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good buy. Uh, my number three, <laughs> Jason, is, is, uh, Grim Forest. And, uh, this game to me, um, I don't know. I just, I like that it hits the right spot to play it with my family. Um, and there's enough interesting stuff in it that it's, it's pretty fun. There's some like guessing and psychology elements to it to try and go where other people aren't going to go. But then you get those kind of cool ally cards or whatever they are that kind of make you have a little player power for a while. And those feel really cool. Um, but then it's just, it's just, it's just fun, Jason, to build a little house. I like building a little house. It's a lot of fun. So, um, the components and the fact that you get to build a little house is kind of fun too. So the art's really good on it. Um, I, I would say it's one of the games that I would suggest people pick up this year, uh, so far. And there's not a ton of those. So Grim Forest is my number three. And I'm doing the same thing as you. I have two games that I like better than it this year. Um, but this one sneaks on the list. It's so crazy to me that this is from 2018 because, man, they've been pumping this game like all last year. Right. It's crazy. I mean, like, I think, I don't know, like, it might be technically 2017 late because the Kickstarters might have gone out then, but it definitely hit retail in 2018 for sure. Yeah. BGG says 2018. So sweet. It's just crazy. I made yeah. it in. Yes. <laughs> All right, uh, the next game I'm going to talk about is called The Mask of the Red Death, and this is seriously one of the best deduction games that I've ever played, like literally ever. 
It's so fun. It has cool artwork. It's tense. It has some programming. The player interaction is minimal, but there's still some there to let you know that, you know, you can't just do your own thing. You got to rely on other people a little bit. And this game definitely is kind of flying under the radar and it needs a lot more love than it's getting right now for sure. Yeah, I think this one's going to be a hit. I think this one's going to be huge. Once people, it's going to be like one of those viral things where a game group's going to have one person with it. It's a quick playing game. They play it and go, people go, whoa. That's awesome. Okay, I need to go find a copy of this. Like it's gonna be that kind of growth, I think, because it just—I don't know—everything about it hits the right, the right keys, you know. And I've never seen anyone who's played this game and gone, "Eh, I'd rather play," you know, Clue. Uh, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. So, um, it's just a really, really cool looking game too. I and just remember, you heard about it here first. Jason was the first guy to really pump this game, I think. So, yep, pretty, pretty great. Yeah, I would play this game probably every game night if I could. That's how much I like it. What's the playtime on this one? Um, I don't know what the box says, but I think we played it in about an hour and a half. That's not bad at all yeah. for this. So that's pretty awesome. That, that was learning it too, so that's not bad. Okay, so cool. Speaking of an hour and a half, my next game takes an hour and a half to set up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. And that is Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. Um <laughs> I really like this game a lot. I mean, it's just a real rock solid game. Um, it's got minis in it, so Jason will never know what I'm talking about. But <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what you're talking about right now. There, I checked out. This truthfully has no reason for like most of the miniatures in the box, but it was a uh, pretty awesome. We're gonna make our box big and sell a lot of these on Kickstarter, kind of move, I think. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, it's a really excellent game. It's a four X game, and it does it in a real like easy and slick way. Um, it's got, you know, benefits to your exploration, extermination, and the other X's. So it's a it's just a good game overall. Um, nice production value, nice art on it. I'm hoping that we can get the artist on the show at some point, um, if I can find his business card. But uh, he he's a good guy. I, I met him at Origins. Um, he's just got a lot of passion for what he did in this game, too. And then this basically, the story on this one is, is it's Tiny Epic Kingdoms. Is that right? Yeah, Tiny Epic Kingdoms. Uh, was a you know the core mechanic of that game was so well liked by people that they said can you blow this up and make it into a full blown big box game and Scott Alms was like you know I will you just you know I will and then Heroes of Land Air and Sea came out so um, I also have the uh, other big box expansion thing there because I'm a terrible impulse buyer and bought the whole shebang at Gen Con but I don't have any regrets um, it's a really good game it's my second favorite of the year so far. Yeah, I mean, I was wondering if he was just going to make this a tiny epic game and then somebody asked him to make it bigger. So, that's funny. It definitely is a tiny epic. Like they like they don't even like hold back on it. Like this is tiny epic kingdoms, but we made it big. So, <laughs> it, I mean, it that's absolutely awesome. is. I mean, it, it, the core <laughs> mechanic of it is exactly that. And like the way how combat works is really similar to tiny epic kingdoms. Um it, ha- it adds a bigger, more adva- more involved tech tree for sure. Um it adds miniatures. So one miniature in this game like would fill that whole box up, but it's uh it's it's a much more involved, much cooler version of the game. So yeah, it's it's uh I don't know, it's it's a civ building a mera type game, Jason, but it's got enough decision making in it, it would probably keep you involved. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like how much is it just attacking people and how much is there actually like other game in there? There's a lot of decisions about how you're gonna try and customize your civilization to match your strategy for sure. Um, that's the thing that I do do have a problem with with most Civ games, and this one included too, is you have to just always be so cautious of the attacking player that you can't exactly do what you want to do, but that's kind of what makes it fun is that tension too. So um, I I will see if I can go find an old, like I'll go to Goodwill and see if I can find a box of like old checkers and like thumbtacks. And I'll like make those into your like non miniature <laughs> game pieces so we can just have you put down like old checkers and thumbtacks instead of miniatures. <laughs> I'm not opposed to miniatures. I just want game around the miniatures. Yeah. Well, and so it, like yeah. there's like one part of this game that you're going to be like, that's real dumb. And that's like some of the miniatures are like peasants basically and they you spend them to do do certain actions but they actually put like full blown miniatures in there. They could have totally been like little like wooden cubes, cubes or chits <laughs> yeah. or something. So 
<laughs> the fact they made them into miniatures, it's kind of neat because every faction has their own, but totally right, not yeah. needed. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, as long as they have a purpose, I'm fine with it. It's just when they're irrelevant and they're just there for show that I, I get up in arms. Check. This game has that. So, yeah. I'll, yeah. Maybe just a box of checkers. No need for thumbtacks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. My number one game so far of 2018, because, yeah, I haven't played them all and I probably never will, but... My number one so far is Coimbra, and this is the guys who do Grand Austria Hotel, Marco Polo, all those other awesome Euro games. There's like that Italian collective of dudes that just make really great games, and this is one of them. This game kind of feels a little bit like a mixture of Marco Polo and Orléans, which is kind of interesting, but it's less dry, and it's more beautiful, and I can't wait to get my copy that's on been on pre-order and I will keep playing it and playing it until I hate it. Yeah, this was supposed to ship, like, what, last Friday or something, and it hasn't gone out yet? Yeah, on the second, yeah. That's, oh, a couple weeks ago now. Yep. That's a bummer. Um, This game, to me, definitely looks awesome, and I have not played it. Had I played it, I have a sneaking suspicion it would have made my top three for sure. Oh, yeah. I have no doubt in my mind that you would love it. Yeah, I mean, like, I like Orleans and I like Marco Polo, both games that you infected me with. So, um, yep. they're both, I mean, those are both really rock solid games. Um, so I, I don't know. I could definitely see myself liking it. And when I saw people demoing it at Origins, I was like, oh, that looks pretty neat. Like, the board just looked like it was full of meaningful decisions. And the little dice caddy holder thingy just kind of seems <laughs> like a cool, like, mechanic that's added to the game a little bit. Um, yep. So I don't know I, I definitely can see why you love this game, and I'm looking forward to it too. Yeah. Yep. Well, speaking of games, only one mechanic is played, and the other one's probably a little envious. Um, yep. Yep. For sure. Number one for me is Feudum. Um, I really love this game. It's got this really cool mechanic that I've never seen anywhere else of this like push pull thing going on, where you do this like push pull action selection kind of thing with these different guilds. Um, and all the different guilds do such kind of cool stuff to interact with each other. Um, it's just a really cool game. And I mean, it technically kind of has combat and stuff in it, but it doesn't feel like it because I don't know that you're like synergizing so much with other players too, trying to like basically leech onto them and use them at times. And then like figure out where they've left themselves vulnerable and like push into their, you know, like guilds and steal stuff from them and, I don't know. It's full of a lot of rage kind of at times, but at the same time, it's very, very Euro game and there's all kinds of room to explore the board and all kinds of room to not play confrontationally if you don't want to. So um, I would say this. I've played this game a few times now. I think I've played it three times, two and a half times, I guess I'll call it. Um, and in even just two and a half full plays, I absolutely love this game. And if you... I have to be at work in a few hours, it feels like, you know, because I've got to sleep. But if I, like, had a chance to set this game up and play it tonight right now with a good group, I would do it and just be tired tomorrow because, I mean, it's that kind of game. Um, really, really, really enjoy it. And it's got some really awesome art, really awesome production value. All this from Odd Bird Games, which, as far as I understand, is a true, hey, this game was kickstarted and this is our, our sole game and I'm a designer that has been working on this thing for years and I absolutely love it. So um, I, I like just, I don't know, just everything about it's really great and it's got just such a cool Monty Python feel to it too that's awesome. Yeah, this game was actually on cool stuff like a couple weeks ago for $47. Oh, man, that's a great deal. Yeah, I almost got it. It's like, man, it hit my, it's in my wheelhouse. It's in my budget right there. But I refrained because outside of playing it with you or somebody, I probably wouldn't play it. So I'm not yeah. going to do it. And it's it's heavy, man. It's probably the heaviest game I own if I had to. Uh, through, the, through the ages of Story of Civilization, New Story of Civilization is pretty heavy too. But this one's up there. I mean, as far as just being a, kind of worker placement or like kind of it's more like a hand management than worker placement uh game it's it's just heavy man i mean there's just so many decisions like i feel like in my two and a half or so plays i've played 40 percent of the game i mean like there's another 60 percent of the game that i haven't explored strategy wise guild wise just everything wise so um really fun game but again the other thing too is like i'm having a board gaming marathon this weekend 
and I know that some of the guys coming over to play, I would explain it to them, and they would just look at me like, "What?" And I won't, I won't get to play it. So yeah, yeah. There's a very specific group I'll get to play with it, and and that's basically my son and Jason. So um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all I am. Like I play with some people who will play heavy games, but when it comes to a point where the game is that heavy, yeah, I'm on my own. It would, I'd have to find you or somebody else that would play it with me. Yeah, I mean, I've got a copy. And I think in that same sale too, where it was forty seven bucks for the base game. I think they were selling like some of the expansions, like the windmills and stuff like that, for like insanely low prices too. And I had them, yeah. I had them all in my cart, ready to check out. By the time I hit the checkout button, they were all sold out. So <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think except for like one or two of them, and I was like, ah, I didn't really want those ones anyway, and I don't want to pay shipping now. So um, right, yeah. anyway, Feudum's my top game of the year so far. Uh, so before we get into our honorable mentions, I'm gonna say if these three games came out last year, they wouldn't be in my top three probably. Um, I just think 2017 was a much stronger year so far. Mm, Coinbro would probably still be in my top three, and maybe Mask of the Red Death. They're both that good. Yeah, yeah. Both. Maybe not Museum, but the other two for sure. I've not played any of your top three either, so I guess that's the other thing too is I need to play your top three and figure out. Hey, maybe there are some good games that came out this year. So the other thing that's funny too is like I don't know. I have this kind of. I'm just gonna jump to this part. There's some games that come out and their timing is so strange, or your ability to play them. It's not like the movies where like, hey, we're gonna have the 2018 movie awards because this game, this movie came out clearly on this date and was in a thousand theaters, so everybody had access to it at the same time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like board games yeah. are totally different. So it's like they go virally kind of in a way. And then like supply issues. So like Dinosaur Island, I know it's a 2017 game for sure, but a mm-hmm. lot of people didn't get to play it till 2018 because it just came out late 2017 and was right. supply issues and stuff like that. So um, that's one that like to a lot of people, it'll be a new to them game, but it's 2017. Um, so Heaven and Nails, the same thing. I mean, that game, I never saw it in a, in a game store until 2018, but it's definitely an SM release from last year, technically. Yep. So, and it's a, it's amazing. Yeah. Would it be in your top three if it was technically a 2018 game? Uh, yeah, it, no, maybe not. I mean, just cause it's frustrating. The scoring was frustrating, but outside of that, everything else is awesome. Yeah. I, I, every time I look at the back of the box, I go, I talk myself out of buying it, but, I just need to stop doing that. Um, it's also one that gets really good sales sometimes too. Like I think Card House had it on a really good sale at one point too, like forty five bucks or so. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, definitely. All right, Jason. Well, I guess I'm gonna say 2017's got this year trumped overall, personally. Um, yeah, but I guess we still need to give 2018 some more time. Yeah, and I have some games that I probably that could. You know, maybe with some more plays, move up the list as well from that came out this year. So I just want to talk about a few of those. Um, Century Eastern Wonders, of course. I mean, the Century series is amazing. Rise of Nobility, cool little dice placement game. Villainous, played that. It's awesome. Reef, also amazing. Rise of Tribes, talked about that in a previous episode. Legend of the Cherry Tree, talked and done a review on that. Caper, talked about this to death. And then Demon Worker. Those are all games that I've dug f- so far from 2018. Yeah, a little surprise Caper wasn't in the top three. It's got to be close. It was close. Yeah, it was tough. It was tough. It was close. Um, Easter Wonders looks fine, but it doesn't look like it does anything for me personally that Spice Road doesn't do. Yeah, it doesn't really, but it's still it's still good. Yeah, I mean, so if Spice Road never came out and this game came out instead, we'd all be talking about it, but I don't know. And it's not that it fell flat. I think a lot of people love Eastern Wonders for sure, but... I don't think it definitely caused the stir that Spice Road did. Agreed. Uh, Rise of Nobility is one that um, it looks like your kind of game for sure because it's got like the whole like dice and worker placement kind of thing together um, and a lot of symbols on a board. But um, it's one that's kind of weird too because I've seen it on sale a few places too. Like I don't know if there was a overstocking of it or what, but that's one that I've been tempted to get when it was like 33 bucks or something different places. I was like, ah, oh, that's, that's not bad. Um, you got a chance to play Villainous then, huh? Yeah, my buddy brought it over, and yeah, it's good. It's a fun game. I played it as a Queen of Hearts. Yeah, it's. I mean, like, it's weird because it seriously, like, the best way I can describe it is 
like Scythe and Magic the Gathering together. I don't know. <laughs> it is, like, yeah. It feels just like that. It's weird. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I like it a lot. Um, it, I don't know. I think the Disney thing will be a double edged sword for it because some people will be yeah. like, yeah, it's a Disney game. It's a licensed property. And other people will be like, oh, cool, Disney games. I love Disneyopoly. And then they'll play it and they'll be like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, cool. My honorable mentions, uh, Temporal Odyssey is really good. Um, really, really good. And that one's just starting to get out in the wild a little bit, but I really love that game. Uh, Empires of the Void 2. Uh, I give it my best game with a terrible name moniker. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know what's going on. That game has so little to do with Empires of the Void, the first game. Like, it's in the same universe, kind of, but I really wish he could have just given it a fresh new name because there's so many times when you get a second edition of a game out that. You're like, oh, it's the same game with like a slight tweak. Well, this one's seriously like an entirely different game, in my opinion. So, um, Empires of the Void 2. And, and then Ticket to Ride New York, actually, I'm going to put on there because what I really like about it is it doesn't reinvent Ticket to Ride at all, but it lets Ticket to Ride be played in 30 minutes or 20 minutes, even if you're, if you're hustling, which is the right amount of time I want to play Ticket to Ride. So, uh, that was definitely helpful too. If only Empires of the Void would have been called Space Force. Yes. That would have been amazing. <laughs> I, I'll bet Ryan Lockett was like so mad. Empires of the Void was on its way to cool stuff. And and, and old President Trump was like, we're going to start a space force. And he goes, mm. yeah. there has to be a game called that sometime. That would be amazing. There has to. And, <laughs> and I'm really hoping my prototype finally gets the licensing rights from Warner Brothers so we can get our Space Jam board game that we want. So. <laughs> That'd be awesome. With yeah, Mike, Michael's secret stuff. So, <laughs> uh, um, so games I haven't played, Jason. I I haven't played a ton of crap this year, and this is stuff that I definitely could see myself having in the top three for sure by the time it's all said and done. Uh, and these are my bucket list of games that I want to play it this year. Uh, Museum definitely. Rising Sun. I would like to give that a shot, even though I've heard it's real similar to Game Master Shogun um, from like 1984 with some like slight twists on it. Uh, really? Yeah. I've, oh, okay. I, I wasn't sure if you were being serious. Yeah, for sure. Like I've heard a couple of <laughs> people say that that like yeah, I like this game the first time it came out when it was called Shogun. <laughs> Um, That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, like it's. I guess just the combat system in it and stuff. There's a lot of similarities. Right. Um, right. Welcome to actually looks awesome for a roll and write. Um, coin. Yeah, coin, I agree. I agree. Coinbra, I think looks really good too. Um, Gugong, I think we're both anxiously waiting on that. I'm not sure if it's gonna be a 2018 or 19. I think they're promising 18, but we'll see. Yeah, they said Essen, so we'll see. Uh, Dino Land, totally liquid. I'm gonna put it on the list because I want Dinosaur Island to get more more mentions. So, um, but I mean, like, really honestly, I haven't played Totally Liquid yet. But Dinosaur Island's awesome, and if it makes the game any better at all, it's awesome. And then Heaven and Ale, I haven't played, but Jason, you talk about it like with love and a lot of passion. So that's one that I would love to see. Everdale, I'm not sure about that one. It's got a lot of hype right now. It looks like it's got some possibilities to be cool. It also looks like it has some possibilities to be super gimmicky. So I'm not sure which one it is yet, but that's one I would like to play once. I won't buy it before I play it, but that's uh, an interesting one. So I don't know. Do you have anything out there, Jason, that you're like munch- munching at the bit to want to play? Yeah, I want to play Teo to walk in the city of the gods, which is like the follow up to Zolkin. Um, Kim has Everdale. So I think we're actually going to try that on Friday. Well, the day this episode releases, I guess. And I also kind of wanted to try, which is going to sound weird to you, but I wanted to try Western Legends because that seems kind of interesting to me. Huh. And I, I've never really played a sandbox game, so I wanted to give that one a go. Is that the Colossal Games one? Yeah, yeah. Those guys are a force, too. I mean, like, I think they've had quite a few things happen in that company this year, um, and it seems like they're really quick to get things through production, so... I'm, I'm keeping an eye on that company for sure. Yeah, they they finished that Western Legends one super fast. Like, I feel like it was just on Kickstarter like three or four months ago. Right, for sure. It's crazy. For sure. Um, and those guys know what they're doing, for sure. So, yeah, it does look kind of interesting. Yep. But, yeah, that's all. I, I mean, and Goo Gong, but I have that coming, so I'll probably get to play that this year, so we'll see. Yeah, for sure. What did we miss, guys? Uh, give us a comment telling us what game that we missed. That's amazing. Um, 
I don't know. And what game are you looking forward to at Essen? Uh, if you guys tell us what's going to be awesome at Essen, then we don't have to do any research and we'll just like plagiarize your <laughs> list. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, cool, Jason. Well, I guess we'll keep an eye on the rest of 2018. And really, I mean, we have a lot of time left yet. We'll see how this year pans out. Uh, all, right. all right. I have been Joel. And thanks for listening. And with me has been Jason. Hey, keep gaming. And that'll go down as our most awkward sign-off ever. <laughs> it will. It's fine. <laughs> All right. I'm exporting now. I need to stop. Well, and she, I mean, she's not going to buy me Kingdom Death Monster. She, <laughs> I'm her sweet baby boy still, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she can get that from Matt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a young single man. He needs a healthy game like Kingdom Death Monster for him. <laughs> Yeah, I you know what that the single thing goes for a few reasons, um, but amongst them is that I have a life of working and having a family, so I don't have time for Kingdom Death Monster, unfortunately, <laughs> or or the money for it. I think if you buy all this stuff, man, it's like a lot of money, a ton of money, yeah. So that's my number three, Kingdom Death Monster. Uh, I know it's not a 2018 <laughs> game, but I'm gonna definitely put it on the list again. It's beautiful with all that black, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I just found our outtake. <laughs>